The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour. My pleasure to be here on this uh, t Wednesday, the 26th and of April. I'm just trying to get something set here. Is that what I've got? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. Okay, I've got that organized. So the Dow right now is down and is up nine points at 33,538. So we've uh, seen the Dow go from being extremely strong with the nine period moving average extremely strong way over the 14 period to a sell signal yesterday having closed underneath the 14 period moving average. That's the price. But we still have not seen the uh, nine period moving average, this green line on the left side chart right here, cross underneath the 14 period exponential moving average, uh, which would then... Uh, my charts are showing, aren't they? Yes, which would then uh, do two things. Number one, uh, if there's a, a slide further down from here to the 33,000, say 400s, probably that's going to, I haven't done it yet, but I will, no, charts are not showing. So let me do this. I'll be, I'll do, I knew there was a problem right there. So I've got that, I've got that, go live. There you are. I'm sure you can see the charts. Okay. Um, am I correct? Uh, saying yes, the charts. No, yes, no, yes, no charts. Uh, yeah, there it is. Okay, good. We're all set. Let's do that again. Down's down 11 at 32,519. You see this little channel that I drew in there? We, act, we closed yesterday underneath it. We closed under the 14-period moving average. So I had to start um, to, to include... All these technicals, like the MACD crossing negative, the stochastic crossing under under 80%, now it's at 57%. On balance, volume was very weak. Relative strength is weak. It was only this nine-period moving average that was holding up the market over the last week and a little bit. And that's really important, I suspect. If there's a lot of weakness today, by, uh, by Friday, we might see the nine under the 14-period moving average, and that'll upgrade from a sell signal to a sell mode. I should probably call it downgrade because it's going down. But look at this. And the weekly chart got repelled at the inside track uh, repellent area. But have a look at this. Here's the S&P. Up four at 4,076. That's even with, I'm sure, uh, CMG. I'm sure Chipotle. Chipotle. Chipotle is in. Um, I haven't updated this. So I had drawn in a long time ago. Isn't that interesting? Um, I had drawn in a left side, right side price time match. And it said, based on this inside wedge target resistance line and the plumb line that I chose as this particular candle, that peak A right there. God, I wish I had looked at this. That by the uh, that would be by the week of the 21st of April, there was a chance that we could get very close to or even touch the high that was made back in September, the week of the 24th of September, 2021, at 1958.55. And lo and behold, today Chipotle is up 247 at 2026. Oh my, what a miss! Uh, I mean, a miss on my part, not a miss on Chipotle's part. I just did not stop looking at it a couple of weeks ago when they had the instant restart in the daily chart. And the monthly chart also had this cup formation. Um, in an, uh, is this an F or a new leg B? Well, uh, you don't have to decide yet because um, this is still, the whole month has to be closed. You've got another couple of days to go and then we can do an analysis on CMG. What an outstanding move. All right, let's get back to our story. So it's, I think that uh, there's a chance that uh, Chipotle is in the S&P. And the S&P right now, as we are speaking, is up four points. But I've gone from a sell. It's at, it's at a sell signal, even though the line is still above the 14. But look at the angle. This angle says there's a real good chance that it's going to close below the 14 and change to pink from green. The MACD is weak. The stochastic is weak. 
the on balance volume holding quite nicely. Rental strength is starting to weaken. So uh, for subscribers, because we've been long and aggressively wrong, long the, um, the Dow over the last week or so, we've been taking money off that. We've got our core position from October, the October exact low. But actually what we're looking at here is that we went short via the S&P, three times short, the S&P, SBXS, on the 19th, I believe it was, the day after, the day they confirmed the peak F top at 4169.48. And we'll, we'll just lower the stop and we'll just make sure that, uh, you know, whatever happens, because that strength said that there could be bounces in the down the S&P. But look at this, the QQQ yesterday closed underneath, I think it's two days, no, it was yesterday, closed way underneath the uh, both the 14 and 9 period moving average, and they it crossed to negative. There's the S, meaning sell. Um, L is go long, S is either short or sell. This is just an indicator. You don't have to do that. I'm just saying this is what we're looking at. And one of the things I was saying yesterday is that if you took the 321.63 high at the beginning of April, the cup formation and the retracement to 321.42 misses by 20, less than 25 cents for making a new uh, recovery high, look how weak all the tacticals were. And that's the reason why I said, just got to be real careful here. We've got a cup formation. It could turn into a, an, um, an arch formation. So these are patterns that I talk about all the time. I'll be doing a lot of work on these, um, and I'm going to demonstrate them in my webinar coming up uh, a week from today. <clears throat> There are basically three patterns that I like to monitor besides all the others, the rectangle formation, etc. But a straight line up, straight line down, cup formation, arch formation. The market does this all the time. Oh, the cup could be a V-shaped pattern and the, the arch could be an inverted V. But basically you're going from one point down and then back to that point. How does it deal with that point when it gets back or in the arch formation? How does it deal with the left side low? Why did I make this red? Because... This pattern called the dreaded H says, if you come down and then you rally, and then at a peak A or B, the first or second peak, you start to fail and you take out that left side low. Look what happened there. There's the arch formation. This is a peak A and a peak B. It goes to B minus because it failed over there. You can go a lot lower if you take out and close below that left side low. So we'll see what happens because the most important thing is you've got two sessions, maybe three, in which to close above the left side low. In this case, 312.57. We're at 313.36. We're above that right now. That's a good sign at this particular point. Days young. We'll see what happens. So as it stands, the QQQ is already in a sell mode. A sell mode because it's the nine period moving average has gone below the 14 period moving average. We're going to be watching this closely. That doesn't mean to say, oh my God, sell mode, that's the end of the world. It just means it's upgraded based on the pattern. The pattern can change to the very next, next bar. But that's what it's at right now. And if I say that, I must tell you, the weekly chart is still extremely strong in all. Look, look at the weekly chart. The cup formation failed under the previous high of 334.42. I don't like that. That says consolidation. But have a look at the S&P um, itself. Look, the, the technicals are still pretty good. And if you look at the Dow, the technicals are even better than the weekly chart. Look at this, the technicals on the weekly chart. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's down 86. S&P's up $1.70. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open. 
to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, so the IWM, the Russell 2000, making this arch formation, but much lower down than the others. And that's really not a very good sign at all. Uh, so at 171.87 down a dollar 23. Oh, it better hold 170, otherwise it retests that low of 167. Was it? Let me just see. 160. 167.46 that was made back at the end of March. Now we go to gold, and gold is up four dollars at 2009. Now, this is fascinating because I've considered that gold is now in a consolidation phase. It's in this rectangle between 2000 and I think it's 47. Let me just see. Uh, 34. 2034. And I would have to say 1976. It's kind of stuck there. Uh, holding very well when you consider the big move that it's had. If you put together with silver, silver is now trading up uh, 0.35 at 25.23. Also just stuck there holding above the 14 period, right on the 14 period moving average. The nine is over it, but they start to weaken. I, I would I would be looking at this and saying probably <clears throat> the 24.80. What is that high? 24.70. 73, yeah, the 2480 to 2450 area, if that gets taken out of support, that's you're going to see a, a, a bit more decline in the, in silver. If you look at Nesada, I showed you high-grade copper at a, a horrible session. It's not very good today. It's up a penny at 3.86, uh, just not doing very well. It's made this dreaded H pattern. It looks like it wants to take out this left side low of really uh, March the fifteenth. Uh, no, March the uh, is that sixteenth or fifteenth? Sixteenth. The low is three point eight three nine, and here it is at eight at three point eight six. It looks like it wants to test it in the daily as well as the weekly chart, even the monthly chart. Now this is going to be very important. Why? Because we're looking at. Um, I just want to do crude oil for the moment because crude oil is also very weak. See, we, we're seeing weakness right across the board. And down $1.30 at 75 76 in crude oil. Natural gas, natural gas is trading sharply lower, down 0.28. The reason why I said I don't want to touch this is because something is deadly wrong with this uh, natural gas contract. Uh, it's, I'm sure at some point it's going to have a huge move to the upside. Until then... I, it's it's just terribly dangerous. Um, within the context of um, the currencies, 
The dollar's attempting, each time it attempts to rally and then fails. An attempt to do that yesterday hit the 14 period moving average, even today it hit the 14 period moving average of 101.89. Now it's at 101.06, down 78. So it's not acting well at all. If you look at the EUR, USD, and this is what I was saying the other day that the currency, the, the euro, is actually doing way better. They uh, cut. The euro usually goes in the direction of gold, not necessarily in the same proportion, just the, the, the projections um, are kind of parallel. They're moving to the upside. So it's in the cup formation, it's nicely over the left side low of uh, earlier this year. Uh, the weekly chart is in a uh, monthly chart is in a leg B. Uh, the weekly chart is in a leg F slash B. We're at a leg D, and the daily charts had a spectacular move. If you look at the EUR USD, that's the uh, yet. Yeah, Oh, you are. Oh, I just typed that in. USD JPY. There we go. USD JPY. Make your peak E. You're pulling back. It's done way better than the dollar. These two usually go together, the dollar and the yen. Not in the same proportion, just kind of the same direction. And now it's made a peak E and pulling back. We are in a very uncertain moment. And the reason why I can say that is if you look, it's not so much, look, the the. Treasury bond ETF, T, the TLT, this is a 20-year Treasury bond, it's actually 20 or more years, is still stuck in the range. I said this weeks ago. I said, watch out. It looks to me like bonds, especially the TLT, are just, it's trading within the range of 100 and, 109 on the top side, 103 on the bottom side. It's just there. It's just there, and it's not yet doing anything on the upside. Now, what's fascinating is I had a question about IEF. IEF is the, this is the, if I can actually read it, it says uh, uh, daily iShares 7 to 10 year treasury bonds. And look, it's in this cup formation. Basically, it looks not dissimilar to the, uh, let me just do this right here, not dissimilar to the TLT. But a, slightly vari a slight variation on that pattern, but basically it's still stuck in a range. That 200-period moving average, and how important is that in my webinar coming up on uh, a week from today, I will be discussing what, what's the implication, what, what's, what's the success of a 200-period moving uh, average in just having it on your chart and ignoring it until you need it. What, does it help? Is it there? Is it just messy? I don't like messy things on a chart, although some charts I keep the notations there just because it's part of the study process that I have for subscribers uh, teaching the, the techniques. But basically, um, look, this 200 period moving average in the IEF, look how important it's been. At one point, I'm just going to go back, back, back. I'll go back as much as I can. Here we go. At one point, it was trading above. And then it pulled back. Look, here it is, nicely above. And then look how long it just hugged that line all the way through 2021 20, uh, from about uh, late September into uh, January, almost January of 2022. That 200-period moving average became a magnet. It was a support level, then a magnet as there was a sine wave as it went wiggling, yo-yo-yoing up and down, over and under, over and under, until it broke down. And since the breakdown on the 29th of December 2021, that IEF chart has not even come close. Did you even need a 200-period moving average up until just recently? No. But wait a minute. My rule of thumb says... When it starts to be, when it's very distant, and then it starts to get closer and closer and closer and closer, then all of a sudden, that 200 period moving average becomes a magnet. And then what does it do? It produces this sine wave up and down, up and down trading range. And this is 99.37. That's your midpoint. And yeah, you are just fluctuating. So I don't see, I just, I've been saying for a while that from my eye, I believe that bonds are just stuck in a range for now. So bonds are really not an issue. There are other things that are issues. So now we need to do this. I did that, I did that, I did crude oil. I want to do, uh, yeah, I want to, let's just go to um, Microsoft. Microsoft came out with, they, they blew away earnings. Everything was just great. Um, 
had a big spike up, up 19 right now to 294.75, hit 297.30 uh, earlier on. And this is now a recovery high. Look at the weekly chart. I can call this an F, a G slash C, because the technicals are so strong. The stochastic's flat. We might just go sideways if there's any digestive phase and then still make a D. <clears throat> Beautiful cup formation. I had this, the cup formation drawn in, left side, right side, price time match, saying that the high that was made the week of, uh, is it August? Yeah, August the 19th at 294.18. <clears throat> Sums down to the 210 level. I drew this in and said, if this chapter wave inside wedge is correct, <coughs> excuse me, by the 14th, the week of the 14th of April, we should be retesting that high. Well, what did it do the week before? It went to 292, sorry, two, yeah, 92.08. Pulls back and today it broke above it. Isn't that fascinating? I'll be back in a moment. Dow's down 164, S&P's down eight. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious tech, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, let me just do this because I'm liable to forget. Uh, as, uh, GT just sent me a note saying, um, I can't see it. I it quick enough. Let me just move this over here. Oh, I'm sorry, I have the wrong computer. Let me just move this. Uh, so what did he say? BYDD, yes. Now, I'm not sure if he's long. This is BYD Company Limited Electric Vehicles in China. This is one of the only electric vehicle companies other than Tesla, which at this point I still wouldn't be looking at on the long side, 
that I thought was a viable, a really viable company that I at least have been following. I used to have this notated, I had this notated going all the way to D, then it fell sharply, and then I forgot about it. It went to an E in the monthly chart. It's trading right now at 59.08. And the monthly chart is in this kind of a rectangle formation. The weekly chart is starting to improve. It went to a peak D. Remember the peak D in the fourth the fourth highest peak in the Chapman wave? That's what we always like to see, a buy, a buy signal upgraded to a buy mode, meaning that you should go to at least four higher peaks and other things can happen. It did that, but it pulled back very sharply, more than more than 50%. And now it's back at 59.03. Um, I like this. I would still say um, if you're trading Chinese stocks, you've just – you either have to have a longer term outlook or very short term and take your profits and get out and start every day fresh. So this could be an E slash B, but I'm calling it an E at the moment in the daily chart. So, yes, it is very nice. I think it's also going to be stuck for a little while uh, between the 60, maybe 62 and a half, 63 area on the upside. And I would say it's got pretty good support at 50 is at 59 right now, between 55 and 53. So yes, uh, trade, trading it that way, or maybe I using I usually use options. That's a, a good way to do it. Question about PCT. Uh, PCT is Pure Cycle Tech Inc. Recycles contaminants into pure polypropylene. Uh, so um, what we're looking at is there's an arch formation in the monthly chart, and it took out the left side low. So this is trough A. I think that's a B and C, D. So this is saying there's a lot of weakness. The weekly chart says, yeah, it might have bounced a little bit, but it's still looking very weak. The daily chart says, I think we spoke about this, that that big spike yesterday and then the close near the bottom and then a fulfillment today to go halfway into the wick. That's really good. It says shorter term. There's this huge gap from the low that was made at four dollars and forty-four. Yeah, four forty-four uh, on the uh, 9th of March. Then it gapped up four days later. Went to peak A, pulls back to the four, uh, pink nine-period moving average. Then screams to leg B, Doji candle. Then makes a peak B, pulls back and gives up almost all of it and starts to fill in the gap. And then yesterday it gapped up, and today the low is so far higher than yesterday's. Uh, uh, gap up failure to the low of the day. So it's it's this is not bad action. I'm just going to say to you, if you've done your homework and you you like the company, then I would not get carried away. Just start little bits of a position, knowing that if it breaks under four dollars and thirty cents, this thing can go all the way to three in a in a heartbeat. But at this point, it's starting to build. Someone's putting some money into it because it keeps having these spikes, but it keeps giving it back with lower highs and lower lows. I don't like that. I want higher highs and higher lows. That's the reason for subscribers why I said today that we're raising the stop on a position we just got because I like, I liked it on the way up. On the way down, if it, it took an extra day to try to find support, and then it fa failed yesterday. So I'm not interested. It'll be a tiny loss, a small position. We can get back into that anytime. I'm I'm raising stops. I'm not getting when we've got split positions and we've only got the one position. I'm not adding that second position just yet. I think this time I want to have cash ready. This market is going to give us a fantastic. That's the reason why I wanted to do the webinar a week from today because I think in this particular phase. We're starting to look at positions that are that have shown some stocks that have shown really good tenacity to hold on pullbacks and move very nicely on the upside. And these are the ones that you want to be looking at on any market pullback coming up. So I'm putting this this pure cycle doesn't fit into that category. It fits into the category that if you've done your homework, um, you want to just have little positions, let them add up over a period of time so that if there's a sudden takedown of that 430 support, uh, you can get out and you've, you, yes, you take a loss, but it's not, a, I would not treat this as my big position. <laughs> That's going to, I, I'm going to retire as soon as this goes from $6 and uh, one cent to uh, 600. And this is just not that stock yet. So just be really careful. It's still in a very vulnerable position. 
it is trying to form some kind of support. Well, the fact that today is giving, getting back some of the the loss from yesterday after that gap to the upside, that's important. That says they are buyers. But be careful. That's all I can say. What you really want to see is within well, today's Wednesday, by Monday, Monday or Tuesday, you do not want to see a close below five. That's number one. And preferably, you want to see a retest of the high that was made yesterday at $6.54. It doesn't have to be six fifty four, but I, I want to see six forties touched in the next couple of days. And they'll say, whoa, now, now it's starting to bull. It's kind of impressive, but it isn't yet. Okay, next question came in. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, yes, ITA, ITA. Oh, I hope I've still got this notated. Yes. I shares U.S. Aerospace and Defense. Let me rather go to the one that I always follow, which is the PPA, which they, they look pretty much the same. This is the Invesco Aerospace and Defense portfolio. It looks exactly the same, just different prices. It went to peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, peak E. And I drew in the rectangle there to show the top, how important that top was, and it failed under it. I don't like it, like the Dow. And the SMB, I don't like failures under the previous major high. I want every new buy signal to buy mode, power through the left side resistance, and turn that resistance into future support. We have not seen that. That's the reason why when I did all my homework, I said, I think we are vulnerable to a pullback. I don't know how much yet. I have an idea in my mind, but the mind is, that's two separate things. The chart has to prove that you're right. And uh, so far, look what's happened. The PPA, Invesco Aerospace and Defense Portfolio, uh, is trading at 79.03, down a dollar 62 after a big red candle yesterday, under key support in the 80 level. Today it's at 79.03. And you've got your dub potential double top in the weekly chart. And let me show you something else. This is what I like to do. Another thing I'll be demonstrating in my um, webinar coming up for subscribers to my opening call a week from today. Look at this vertical test. Look at that peak F, what well, was a leg F in the weekly chart back in March, the week of the 10th of March. Look how the MACD was good, stochastic was still over 80%, on balance was really good. Look what's happened here. And that doesn't say, oh my God, that's the end of the world. It just says, this side is way weaker. You deflected lower in the MACD. It didn't even cross positive. It just deflected lower. Stochastic is now at 67. On balance volume is still good. And the nine period, given uh, if it happens for another week or so, that nine period moving average will finally cross negative. So I'm just saying to you, be real careful in this area. And I think I have to put Boeing in this area, obviously. Boeing's holding okay, it's up $5 at 208.03. But look at that weekly chart, it's just kind of steady. I'm keeping my eye on Boeing because I think for the next big move up, maybe this time Boeing will really participate. I'll be back in a moment. Uh, down 17, S&P's down two. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today 
and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. I just wanted to show you how I, I, a technique that I, I, I use uh, very often. Uh, I look at rectangles, and if the price starts to have a very narrow range, you can get a long, narrow rectangle. And what I do is I, I count the peaks, etc. But if it pops just once after a while, it pops above the upper trend line resistance, that's the rectangle horizontal line resistance, and then takes out a midpoint horizontal line, what we're looking at is the chance that you're going to go underneath, test or break the left, the um, lower trend line and go sharply under it and then maybe come back to retest and then, then you're going to see what strength is. Large rectangle has other connotations. So what did we have? We had from yesterday, just just as the, at about the close, when there was that pop-up just before the close and then we ran up to the... Uh, 41, I think it was 15, let me just check there, 41, 16.25 high. And then you made a 41.08 low, and it stayed in this range all the way through. And then went to a peak D, just a, just a fraction under that uh, trend line resistance. And then it took out the low. And then uh, what's the rule of thumb? The rule of thumb is it tries to check. Uh, to say it happened so quickly, it doesn't get a chance to say goodbye to its friends. So it has a little pop up, and then that halfway line becomes the test. And if that halfway line is not exceeded, you can go back down in the arch formation. And there it is, the arch formation. So we went to the left side low. And I, I like to do this, I do it more as an experiment because it's almost impossible to say it's such a long period of time. Do you think it's even possible? I have a particular, either I can see visually an arch or a cup where I can say that is definitely the plumb line that I can use for counting the number of bars from the left to the right. Otherwise, I have to use a particular candle. I always try to, I try to, I have very strict rules and I can use some of the rules. But you really don't want to make up rules as you go along because then you've got um, – you, what's the use of any methodology if it's so flexible that it doesn't really have rules? So I did this. I made this particular candle right here at uh, 20. That's 20 minutes past 12. I This I did much later on because I was sleeping at that time. No, I wasn't. Well, almost about to sleep. Uh, and that was the 4108 low, 4108.50. And I said, if I take that and I do a measured move from the left side to the right side, where would I get to? And I just left it there and said, let's see what happens in the morning, just as I did. And I forgot about it in the chart of whatever it was we were following just a moment ago. Uh, what was it? Oh, CMG. Uh, right. And then I also showed you the cup formation in. Let me just have a look here because I've already forgotten what it was. Cup formation. Uh in one of the charts. So, all right. What I did was I drew that in, and now we're over here. We don't know anything about this particular one. And look where it went. It went right. It was a bar late. In a 10-minute bar, it was a bar late. 
using this as the plumb line. But it made a beautiful arch formation with nice symmetry. I didn't expect it actually to test that low at that time. Um, when I woke up, it was actually over here. It was before it was like I was there, where it just flipped to an S from an L to an S, meaning cell. And there, uh, it, it started coming down, and we were already in the 4108 area. Why Did I think it would t test the uh, 4091? Well, it did. So then what happened is we made the cup formation. Remember, arch formation, sometimes you switch between arch, cup, arch, cup, that's a sine wave um, pattern. And, but this one's making lower lows and lower highs. And then we made a second arch formation, took out the left side low, and this is where we are. And that just says by later today, by maybe uh, 1.30 this afternoon, we'll do 1.30 and 2.10 this afternoon. If the S&P actually, instead of being down 325, it's not too bad actually, down 325 after yesterday's action. If the S&P is trading about 4108 to 41. 10, this is the E-mini, there's a chance that there's a little, that there's a kind of a comeback later today, and that's the reason why I said that 9-period moving average way over the 14-period moving average still gives you reflexive upside action. So we're going to be watching this very closely. Obviously, a move below 40, I'd say 40.70 says, ha, forget about it. Not, not, not today, folks. So we're going to be watching that very closely. Here's the other thing I wanted to talk about. So uh, did I do that NU? Question about NU. Uh, oh, I've got the chart of Meta Platforms right here. It's up $3.64. It made in the Chapman Wave methodology, it made of G slash C. I, the reason why I have an alternate count there is that this the, the MACD, and I'll talk about this as well, was flattening out. But the nine period over the 14 was so strong. It said to me, just keep the alphabet going. You don't have to give alternate counts until you get to G. We always are making a rule now. Uh, one of the few rules, a couple of rules that I've changed from my CD introduced in the Chapman Wave Methodology uh, book that uh, that said uh, you from an instant restart, that's where you, you can have an alternate count. In this case, it was not three bars, but five bars from that peak D that took out. But everything about it said that if this nine period moving average is very strong, just keep counting alphabetically up. And then often you find at GCSC, there's a cup formation, and then there's one pop to a D, and that's where you get the big sell-off. And it's a leg D going to a peak D in the weekly chart. So Meta says it's been a spectacular move from under 100 to the 220 area, now to 211. Um, how it pulls back in this particular consolidation, I call it a, a digestive phase that we're in right now, it's going to be important. But 202 is the nine period weekly uh, moving average support, 192 is the next one. Uh, are we going to go d that deeply because it'll take time to do that? I don't know yet, but I can just tell you this based on the lower lows and lower highs. If uh, Meta takes out 205 as uh, 205 support, there's a real ch good chance that this whole gap and the low that was made in the uh, 202 to, uh, let's call it 197 area, that's that's going to be the next target. I don't want to draw it in now. Maybe when I do the, the 1 o'clock show, I'll do I have a chance to do it. And then I was about to talk to the issue of, <laughs> I shouldn't have done that, um, I, I wanted to change it, and I saw Meta. I said, let's just finish this chart right here. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. Um, so a, a, a couple of questions came in about oil. Is this the time to be buying SCO? SC, where am I typing? I'm typing in the wrong place. Let me type it here. SCO is, it goes the opposite way of oil. The SCO is the United States. Uh, this is the pro shares of the United States oil fund. In other words, when oil goes down, this goes up. So, uh, you know, the person who asked me that, um, I know that you've done this many times before. You're not unfamiliar with the whole process. You're not un unfamiliar with the fact that oil can have very sudden moves like any commodity. Uh, overnight things can happen. But I must tell you, that I looked at this so closely the other day because I did hear uh, talk about oil uh, speeding up to the hundreds, etc. I don't see that. I think oil is stuck, and I tell you, between oil, 
a high grade bonds, a high, sorry, high grade copper and uh, wood. The ice is global timber forestry. I think there's a slowdown economically uh, worldwide that that's really what we're looking at. So I'm just going to say, yeah, I think that if you are very, I'll talk about it when we get back. I don't TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, boys, let me just finish this here quickly. Uh, this is the right side, price time match. I'm just doing this. It says that by 11 o'clock, that's another couple of minutes, uh, five minutes or six minutes, we should be testing the 4,090 uh five area to four thousand ninety six so we'll see what happens there and key support now is at any point in the next 20 minutes if there is a, a two bar trades under four thousand and eighty six that says there's a problem it's just really stuck can't get any upside traction at all all right so a couple of questions came in and i don't know if i can do it now but i'll be back at one o'clock in another two hours time and i will do them so the question came in so PCT, if I could look at it, I'm just going to make it real simple. If PCT trading at $6.04 uh, by within the next, I'd say, the next two and a half hours, if it actually starts to trade and hold for 20 minutes above 6.24, there's a chance it could try now rather than wait to get to yesterday's high. Uh, so, but it's, it really has to hold that because if it takes if it takes out uh, five uh, five eighty support, that's a problem. Next question was, 
just running through this quickly. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, please uh, review the 60-minute chart of BBAI. So let me just do this here. BBAI. BBAI is uh, Big Bear A dot AI Holdings trading off the peak D top that was made in exactly the left side, right side price time match uh, to the 363-ish area pullback. Um, uh, yeah, this just says 236 is a 200-period moving average. You can't get away from that. So, folks, I'll be back. But in the meantime, the, the, if the if the S&P, which is up a dollar right now, is able to get to about a plus 10 to plus 12 by 210, I'll be back before then. But by 210, we could have at least a nice uh, recovery uh, bounce today into the close. But this says to me, it's really struggling. I'll be back 